Oh man, it is good when you stop by because I know what we're going to be talking about, OTC and penny stocks, some good stuff. I'm John Zadar. This is the last Monday before Christmas. It is December 19th and you're watching On Top and Hot. Now, I don't rarely say this, but you probably already know it, but disclaimers are important. I'm not licensed in anything, folks. I'm just a retail investor like yourself. So anything I say is definitely my opinion. Always do your own due diligence. Also, something else I don't mention very often, these are all brought to you by Penny Boys. Penny Boys Discord is why I do these. I'm in the OTC section. We have the major exchange section, cryptocurrency options, tokens, I mean, we have something for every single sector of trading. And we have people who specialize in those areas that teach us how to trade. Give us alerts. I mean, lots of good information. So please stop on by. The OTC section is completely free. We're not trying to sell you anything. It's just a place to chat share information, talk about the stocks we're trading, share the news. I put a lot of news up there, folks, about everything. So if you want to join us, and I hope you do, use the address that's going to come up at the very end of this scroll over here. That'll be an invite from me. Say yes and come on in. Speaking of that scroll over there, that is news from the OTC market over the last six days that I have read. It's real interesting news. It's all the deals, the mergers, acquisitions, uplistings, bankruptcies, dividends, all the stuff you're trying to find when you're reading the news. But it takes time. It does. That is six days worth. I didn't do it all in one day. That was an accumulation of reading and throwing it up there. So if you haven't got time to comb the news like I do, right there is a perfect cheat sheet for you. Now, this is another cheat sheet for you. This is the otcmarkets.com website. I love this site because it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC for all the OTC stocks, every single one of them, every single day. Do you know how easy that makes my research? And I do a lot of research, folks. Could you imagine how much time I'd be wasting if I was going to Google, having to sort through everything every time I wanted a piece of information? <laughs> yeah, I've been there. I've done that. That's why I really appreciate this site. Really, folks, if you haven't made a habit of coming here first, try it. See what you like. If you don't like it, you can always go back to whatever it was you were doing before. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. I'm hoping it's better than that. Let's refresh it. You know what I like to do? Oh, come on. No, not a great day, not even a good day. We're at $1.7 billion volume. That's not great. Our dollar volume should be up over $2 billion. Haven't been there for months. Share volume. What was it? Seven billion the last time we looked at it. So we're falling again. We got to get over ten billion to get into second gear. And our trades forever, forever, forever. As long as we've been doing videos, it seems we've been stuck between two hundred and fifty and three hundred thousand. So nothing is changing here. Thank God I keep it fresh. I've got some stocks I want to share with you that were running today. They were running good, all for different reasons, and they are juicy. Come take a look with me. All right, this first stock we're going to take a look at had a good day because it had great news come out on Friday. This is ticker MGUY, M Guy. I like that. Also known as Mogul Energy International. The news that came out on Friday was really juicy, folks. Had a strong impact. They are getting a lot of assets and a lot of opportunity for expansion and growth. So it's really good. They finished the day today at 8 cents with about 82% gains. The bad news is they are on the pink limited information tier. That is not good. That means that they are late on one or more of their financial filings. And I'll tell you this, folks, the OTC market don't play no games with this anymore. If you don't get those financials in soon enough, they will just yank you off the OTC market and throw you down to the expert market. And when a company goes down there, their shares cannot be bought or sold. And if you're invested in the company while they're down there, you're in limbo too. Once they get those financials caught up and filed, they will come back onto the open market. Just that easy. Actually, it's even easier if they do it before they go down to the expert market. They do have the transfer agent verified here, but they don't have the other tick I'm always talking about, the verified 
uh, profile. They are both important, especially if you're going to be in the stock for a long hold. However, if you're just going to do a day trade or a short swing, none of this is going to matter. Hardly anything's going to bother those sort of trades. Now, the other thing I do want to point out with this company is that it is what I like to call a Karen Courier play. Karen Courier has earned my respect. This is a woman who invests in companies not by buying them, but by fixing them. She actually saves dead horses. She finds these companies like down at the expert market that have no management and terrible condition are never going to come up because nobody's going to file their financials, goes to the court and gets permission to be custodian. That is head dog. Even in a, if a company comes in and they have CFOs and CEOs and all that, the custodian is head dog. And what she does, she gets responsibility to clean the company up, get all the financial filings caught up, take care of all the dirty laundry, whatever it costs at her expense. And then she finds a deal, gets them out in the market, and she gets a commission for doing all of that. So she's got a personal invested monetary investment interest in these companies just like we do. So I like to see her attached to them. I feel confident that she's going to get the job done. So, what does MGuy do? Well, they tell us here that MGuy is a private oil and gas operator based out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Okay, if they say so, but I got two questions. If it is a public company, how can it be a private company at the same time? Forget it, we'll just let that go by. The other thing is, I was just into their most recent financial disclosure, and they've got that exact same sentence, except here, instead of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, it says Houston, Texas. Now, I don't think it makes a huge big difference, but I'm just letting you know it could be Houston rather than Fort Lauderdale. So, what was the relative volume today around that news that came out on Friday? Not that big. I wonder if she had a big run on Friday. This is 170,000 shares a day. That's under the radar. Nobody's paying attention to you. And today she got 2 million shares, which is definitely some recognition by all means. Share structure. All right. I don't like to trust this page anymore. We got 20 million unrestricted. We got 14 million DTC. That's worthless to me. And we got nothing here for the float. But thank God it's a, a disclosure and not a 10K or 10Q. I jumped into it. Shares in the public float is low. <laughs> we are just under 8 million. 8 million in this, folks. So there's a good thing to know. What are the financials? Well, it says it's a shell company, but we're just going to show you. It should say all zeros over here, dashes. They got nothing coming in. But as I said, things should be changing here in very short time. The financials. All right. We are late, right? That's what we're looking for. They, You don't want to invest in a company that's going to slide off this slippery slope down onto that expert market. So how much, how far are they behind? I see uh, 12, 3, 6, they're every three months here. They've been having trouble with their attorney letter, obviously. You got to put in an attorney letter with your annual report, not your quarterlies, but every annual. So it looks like just the last financial. I don't see a nine here. And at this point, they're going to be two behind because we're coming to the end of December, right? But at this point in time, they are one financial behind September's. Get that caught up. They should be out of hot water as long as they're ready to get December's in. And down here, we got anything? No. These are our other SEC filings. I like to look for 8Ks, S1s, even 4s, but recent ones, right? All right, what do we have to look at? We've got news, All right? Let's jump on over here. And as you can see, there's only one piece of news from anywhere. Online, piped into here, there's only one piece of news, and this is it. This came out on the 16th. Mogul Energy International completes acquisition with companies in the transportation sector. Mogul Energy International today announced its acquisition of Flora Group of Companies. That is Florida Beauty Flora, Florida Beauty Express, Floral Logistics of California, and Tempest Transportation. Flora provides refrigerated trucking and logistic services to companies in floral, plant, food, and other industries that require specialization in time-sensitive temperature control segments of the supply chain. 
Florida Beauty Flora was established in the mid-1980s and now along with other flora companies consists of floral transportation, logistic, and warehouse consolidation specialists, supplying primarily refrigerated, long-haul, regional and dedicated transportation and logistics services for the floral and plant industry. The company looks to grow its revenues from approximately $70 million in 2022 to $185 million by 2025. Flora currently has, this is their assets, approximately 230 trucks, 320 trailers under its management, as well as three main locations in Florida, Tennessee, and California. Florida is the bulk hub for flora with roughly 200,000 square feet of cold storage dedicated mostly to fresh cut flowers and produce, making it one of the largest in the southeast region. Flora currently employs approximately 300 people in the United States and plans to double that number over the next few years. Becoming an industry leader is what they want to do and they want to push this to the NASDAQ doing that. And then this last paragraph tells us that they're going to update the equipment. They've got some older trucks they want to convert over to more efficient trucks. They're also going to incorporate some new IT and software capabilities. So they're going to try to streamline the company. And as you can see, the company's not making any money. It's a shell company, right? And the company that they're looking at already did $70 million for 2022. So they're just jumping right into the revenues just like that. That's a good thing. The only bad thing we see here is being late on the financials and that's an easy fix. And I think they'd probably fix that with the deal sitting on the table now. You can't make any deals when you get into those sort of hot waters. So I'm sure that'll probably be taken care of. Let's go take a look at that chart. See what she was doing earlier today because I know she was up near 300%. Yes, she was. You know the drill by now. We're over here at Think or Swim, the free trading platform you get from TD Ameritrade for signing up for their free trading account. And all you got to do, that's right, keep your account open. It's just that simple. So we are looking at ticker MGUI, M guy. This is a six month, four hour chart. And obviously she has been falling downhill underneath the 200 all this time until she hit this low bubble in mid-November, just over two cents. And then she started to bounce up. She has changed her trend. Once she got over this 50 day SMA, the yellow line here, she took off hard and strong, pushed herself through the 200, but couldn't hold it, just broke the ice came back down, landed on the 50-day SMA and took another bounce, another try at it, and this time she stuck it up over the 200. We got lots of volume coming in right now, and our technicals are very strong. We've got a crossover on the MACD, and she is pushing up with a lot of fury, just like our PPO. Now, these two, the PPO and the MACD, they're actually akin to each other. The MACD uses the full price. The PPO, percentage price oscillator, uses the percentage of the price. And our ADX looks really nice. Now, this is a really simple tool, folks. This line here, we don't care what direction it's going up, down, flat, it doesn't matter. What we care about is that it's straight. We want a straight line. And what this represents is the trend on the chart. As long as this is in a straight line, whatever trend you have is going to continue. What's my trend? It is going up right now. That is a straight line continuing in a straight line. So everything looks really good right now. Now I see something here I want to share with you. Was well, I'm planning on this, but it's jumping out at me right now. The PPO right here, right? We see a crossover here. All right, look at that blue line. Now look at this blue line here. Compare the two together. Same line. This is the nine day SMA. Now look at this red line and compare that with the yellow. Same thing. What we've got here is the nine day and the 50 day SMA down here on your PPO, your percentage price oscillator. And I like this tool because it shows me when strength and power are on the board. Look, we've got a crossover right there that I always say is a sign of power. Well, let's prove it. Go straight up there, folks. Look, as soon as that nine day crossed that 50, these little itty bitty price bars turned into monster bars, right? And that's what happens when she jumps onto the 200 as well. But this tool shows me the 50. So when I see that about ready to cross, look, 
That is right before the big bars, right before it. So I had plenty of notice. This is a good tool. I put my PPO on the top, my ADX on the bottom, because together they can give me a lot of information. And when you keep them in that order, PPO on top, ADX on bottom, you can find patterns. You can see patterns and know with 100% guarantee what's going on or what's going to be going on just by looking at those patterns. So as you can tell, I like those tools. Let's come on down to our 20 day, one hour view. So there's our two jumps, one and two. She is riding on the 50 day SMA here. She did get under it, got all excited again here on Monday and took off. Now, isn't this Friday? It is. This is when the news came out. So we had a little bit of rise on the news, but nothing exciting. I, you know, this is what I would have expected on the news. Instead, we had a delayed reaction. I guess people dove into it, realized what it was all about, and boom, we got a huge run today. She ran from about four and a half cents up to over 12 and a half cents, somewhere between 250 and 300% gains, and then she fell back. But she is sitting right on top of that nine day SMA, which is cracker thin, not a lot of strength in a nine day SMA. The price can come through it so easy. So when it doesn't, that means the price is strong. And we see she is green right now at this moment. And if you look close, you can see these are not flat. Every single one of them has the just the starts to starting to go up right now. All of these are showing signs of hope right now. Let's take a look at our five day, five minute. Well, there's your run, folks. She started very early in the day at, uh, oh, not really, that's only 10 minutes before the bell. 10 minutes before the bell, she took off and started running, and she ran all the way until 10.30. How about that? We got a long run out of this. She went sideways a little bit. Then you got your warning bars. We got two bars there. That should have caught your attention. A little bar, a lower low. Look, that's what you got here. One, two, three, three lower highs. The highs are getting lower and lower. And when you see that, that's a signal that it's changing directions. So you may want to get out right about here after you see three drops in a row. Don't wait. As you can see, she continued falling, took a little hesitation on her 20-day SMA here, picked up some momentum, crushed that 50-day SMA, and then came back up on top. And she is stuck right now between her 20 and her 50, right in the middle. Our technicals. Now, on the five minute, everything looks asleep. Everything looks like it just isn't gonna do anything. All very calm and flat. But I like this company. When you consider the fact that it's a shell company, it says shell right now, they have no revenues. They've made a deal that is gonna not only give them revenues, but assets, lots of assets. They said they did $70 million worth of business this last year. So that's gonna plug right into this company. They're gonna have revenues, lose that shell, and be in business. So right now would be a real, real good time to consider this company before they come out with some bigger news that makes it run even harder. That's my opinion. Do your own due diligence. But what do you think so far? This stock here, it's doing its impression of an oxymoron. It's not acting the way you would think it would. This is ticker STRY, Starry Group Holdings. They had big news today. It was horrible. They got delisted from the New York Stock Exchange. They got thrown down to the OTC market, lost their status, lost their badge. But you wouldn't know it by looking at the charts. She finished the day at a penny and a half with over 580% gains. And would you believe me if I told you that is about half of what she put on the table today? I am not kidding. She is pink current and that's all the information we get. She just got here. Now there's some bald spots here and I've been trying to fill them in for us. What does this company do? They are into wireless technology. They tell us over here that by using their own innovative wideband hybrid fiber fixed wireless technology, Starry is deploying gigabyte capable broadband to the home without bundles, data caps, or long-term contracts. Sounds good to me. So what was the relative volume today around that bad news and their demotion? Not as much as I was thinking with the gains that they had today, that's less than three times their normal volume. She went from 6 million shares a day for the last 30 days to just over 16 million. 
Interesting. Share structure. All right, here's one of those bald spots. We got no information here. So while I was looking up the float early, I saw this news early and I posted it. And I wanted to tell everybody what the float was, so I looked it up. Well, when I was looking up the float, I noticed the price up here. Now, when I saw this first thing this morning, the price was 0.0022. That's right, it had two zeros in front of two twos. And I thought, what is the market cap gonna be on this? So I went and found the float, which is 97 million shares, and I found the outstanding, I can't remember what that was, and I multiplied it times the price. That's how you get the market cap. Take the price, multiply it times how many shares are in the outstanding, and voila, you got your market cap. Well, the market cap this morning was $350,000. Holy cow, itty bitty dinky. But now, it's totally different. I mean, what, what is that, five and a half times that. So you're looking at almost, uh, $2 million market cap now. So, my point, we got a float of $97 million. Financials for this, X New York Stock Exchange stock, well, at the end of last year, she was doing $22 million worth of business. Remember those three zeros there, they gotta come down. And quarterly, oh, they're doing pretty bloody good. Look at this, first quarter, 7.3 million, second quarter, 7.7. .7 third quarter 7.9 look every single quarter they are increasing revenues that's good for them sorry to see they got demoted disclosures well that's what is all about over here there's lots of information about the process they were warned a long time ago they didn't meet the minimum bid requirement meaning their price <laughs> was under a dollar Boy, was there ever. And you can't be under a dollar on the major exchanges for too long or they throw you off. All right, that is really all you got going on over here. I don't even think we have any news brought over. We do, uh, yeah, they're talking about the problem with being kicked off the New York Stock Exchange by not meeting their minimum price listing rule. So let's go take a look at that chart and let me impress you. Let me impress you. Oh, cut it out. Now, this is going to be an interesting chart to look at. This is ticker STRY. This is a six-month, four-hour chart. But as we zoom in, you're not going to actually notice this 1,000-plus percent gain today. You're not going to see it. You're going to think I've made a mistake. I'm actually going to have to point it out to you. The charts are deceptive. So on our six month, four hour chart here, we got a high bubble back in July of almost $11, $10.90. And yesterday, we had a low bubble of triple zero two. Unbelievable, can't even calculate the drop there. And as you can see, she's been falling this entire time and has been flat for a while. And here, just before she got kicked off, a lot of activity started coming in. You can see all the volume here, but she is falling. And all of the technicals show the same thing. Our PPO is pushing down, MACD, and holy cow, look at our RSI. The basement floor is 30. It fell all the way down to 1716. Goodness gracious. Looking at that 20 day, one hour view. All right, she was falling down, had a couple of pops here, jumped here from 17 cents to 26 cents. You're looking at about a 50% jump, got over the 200 and couldn't hold it. Another real quick jump. Notice these are pre-market jumps, folks. You can trade these NASDAQ New York Stock Exchange stocks pre-market, after-market hours. You don't need any special permission or qualifications. Just remember to set your time period when you're making your purchase. It says day, put in day plus extension, or good till canceled plus extension, or just extension. But you better get extension in there or else it'll just ignore it. And then we had some huge drops here, just falling off of ledges. A little bit of recovery here, but it looks like she's back to falling. But you can definitely see that volume is increasing every single day, and it was very strong today. Our technicals, well, our PPO is negative. That is rolling down underneath the pink. Our MACD actually has just had a crossover, and I see a hint of actually trying to push up there. And our RSI has gotten lazadazical <laughs> down here at 38. Let's look at our five-day, five-minute. All right. Who can tell me where our 1,000%, actually it was a 1,700% gain today at her high? Can anyone see it there? No, that's not it. That was a couple days ago. It's right here, folks. 
right there, there is a 1,700% gain. That was her high that she hit today. You don't believe me? All right, let's zoom on in. Going into there. All right, so here's our low, right? This is where she closed yesterday. Actually, that's under 002. That is less than 002. Up here is about 002 right there. And up here, her high is at three and a half cents roughly. Now to make it real easy to do the math, take away all the zeros. That is two to 35. That is 17 and a half. 1,750% gains at her high today unbelievable and then she leached on to this 200 day SMA slid down it like a slide and then fell on her can right here dragged herself over to here and is now crying in the corner still falling but look at all that volume coming into the picture now the technos technicals do not look good we have our blue line pointing down our red line pointing up when you see that configuration it means the price is falling so that isn't a good sign oh and we got a crossover on the downside on our macd and our rsi is clear down here at 34. so yeah i'm expecting this to actually continue falling but you know what with these sort of stocks it's very difficult to tell what's going on this is bad news she was kicked off of the nasdaq down to the otc who would think that would be anything to celebrate but we see this over and over again with any of the stocks coming off the major exchanges whether it be from minimum bid price requirement minimum shareholder value uh, bankruptcy whatever it is and normally what you'll see up there is a bounce just before they leave the nasdaq or the new york stock exchange and then once they hit in the OTC, dust themselves off, we see another bounce. Now, sometimes they're right the next day, sometimes they're two weeks down the road. You can never tell, and I can never explain why. But it's good information to know. Watch any of these stocks falling off the NASDAQ to the OTC. They could be money makers for you. Easy. I'm willing to bet if I gave you just a few moments with just that little bit of information on the screen, you'd probably know everything you really need to know. But I'm going to go ahead and share what I know anyways. This company is Revlon. That's right, the cosmetics company. Their ticker, R-E-V-R-Q. That Q got put on the end of their normal ticker because they entered into a bankruptcy back in June, July of this year. And that Q will fall off when they come out of bankruptcy, which is what the filing is all about that came out today. Basically, right there it says that they have entered into a restructuring support agreement. That is the literal light at the end of a tunnel that you need in a bankruptcy. That's the first sign that... Whew, we're going to get out of this alive. And of course that was going to happen. Companies like Hertz and uh, Latin Airlines, Revlon, these are branded companies. There's been a lot of money invested so that you know that name as soon as you hear it. I didn't have to show you a picture. You knew who Revlon was. Well, they're not going to let companies like that die. They just never do because the brand has value. So this company is back in the game. It is going to be a process. We got to get through that tunnel but that's why it's running today. She finished today at 57 cents roughly with about 63% gains. She's on the pink tier and that's all the information they give us from these demoted stocks. So what was the relative volume today around this good news? Not as much as I thought. No, she did 107,000 shares for the last 30 days. Today she did 10 times as much, just going over a million shares. Our share structure. All right, they don't give us any information or numbers to look up here, so I went out and looked and I could not figure it out, but I'll tell you, I came across three numbers and I can't tell you which one it is because they were the only ones that kept coming up. One was about three million, one was about seven million, and one was about nine million. So no matter which way you slice it or which dice you choose, they're all great. They're all super low floats under 10 million. Financials for Revron. How is Revlon doing? Oh my God, look at the financials. Now don't forget those three zeros here, folks. We gotta put that behind anything here. So at the end of last year, Revlon did over $2 billion worth of business and they're down here on the OTC market. And look, they got to keep $1.2 billion. So if you've always been of the mind, oh, they're bankrupt, they can't have any money, they're broke. 
No. Look, they've been making money all along. Now let's check quarterly. Let's see what's been going on. See, it's been since summertime. This is when they announced they were going bankrupt. This is before the bankruptcy. You can't tell anything looking at their revenues that they were going through hard times. Nothing at all. It all looks good. So they are still generating lots of money. Disclosures. Let's see what we got here. We've got an 8K that came out today. I just showed it to you. And an 8K back, well, they've been working on this restructuring, so you've got a lot of information here about that. But let's go take a look at that chart. Are we going to get some more gains out of this as she recovers and gets healthier? Maybe. So we are looking at the bankrupt Revlon, ticker REVRQ. And this only started on October 21st. That's when this ticker went live. The other ticker carries you up to this point. And at this point, we were at $2.50. And she had a low about two, three days ago of $0.32. Cents. And right now, we are at $0.57. Cents. She has broken all of her SMAs that are on the board right now. She was under that nine day SMA this entire time, all this time until today. Today was the first time she shot up, pushed through every single SMA, did come back through the 50, back through the 20, but has landed on the nine day. And that's excellent folks. That's the first step. You are never going to climb if you're underneath the nine. Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> you got to get on top of the nine if you want your climb to continue. And that's where it landed. All that work, it was determined and it's sitting there. Oh, and look at this. This is a perfect example of what I've been talking about over and over again. You see the pop bottle here? The blue side and the red side. Well, you see when it was coming down here into the neck, falling, falling, falling. And here it's rising, rising, rising. Well, follow my line straight up. That's where she started falling. So when you see that coming together on your PPO and your ADX, that's what happens. And then look, where the pop cap goes, it's popped off and it's getting wide again. Look, the price is moving up. So that's exactly the way this works. So that's why I like to set up my PPO and my ADX on top of each other like this so I can see that pattern right there exactly. Watch it come as close as they can get and then watch them start to spread apart. And that's when I like to determine my entry points by looking at the strength. We got a crossover on our MACD here pushing up and oh my God, look at that surge on the RSI folks. Look how long it was in the basement. That is a while. She was underneath all this time. As a matter of fact, that is the highest the RSI has ever been since this ticker has gone live. Let's take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Yeah, long, drawn-out slope all the way down to that low bubble. Wasn't going to change, was it? She looks like she was almost there, probably there again. And then out came that filing today and she took off. She got all the way up here to $1.37. Whoa, where did she start here? At about 35 cents. So you're looking at one, two, three, 350% gains, something or a lot like that. And again, it wanted to get on top of this 50. It overshot, Ooh, gotta get all the way up there and boom, landed it right there like the Olympics. I'm giving it a 10. Perfect landing, looks great. Volume has been very strong today. Our technicals show a lot of strength, but they do show signs of cooling off right now. But again, I say she's sitting pretty after coming out from underneath everything. Let's take a look at that five day, five minute. Oh, what a nice run. So she was under the 200 all this time, had no inspiration. Today she got inspiration. She did take off from that 35 and stayed on top of her nine day SMA for the entire climb. No red in there. This is beautiful, folks. This was a nice climb for her. She hit that high here at 10 to lunch. <laughs> 10 to 12 and then she fell and I'm not surprised folks look she's been down here flat for a while there's been people holding this stock for a long time they don't want to hold the stock they just want to get their money especially now before Christmas sad market conditions yeah these are some pretty gains here so a lot of people took their gains but then you got a lot of other people other people <laughs> who are going through a thought process this company is coming out of bankruptcy they're are working towards getting back on the major exchanges. They're still making buku bucks. Last year, over $2 billion. So you know what? 
I think I'm going to hang on while this thing's rocketing out of this zone. Right now we're at about 50 cents, just roughly. It goes to $10. That's a 2,000% gain, folks. 2,000%. This is in the recovery stage now. Now is not the time to sell. Now would be the time to buy. Of course, you don't want to buy when she's got a surge running like that. She's going to have her pop. She's not going to go from 50 cents to $10 straight. You know, it's going to be an up and down ride. But after she has these surges, there's always going to be people somewhere in the past who are waiting to get out. And you're going to have these exit points. And then you're going to be able to buy down here at the bottom knowing that's the cheapest price you're probably going to get. And right now would be a good time. I don't know what Revlon was worth. I haven't looked at her old ticker, but I got to imagine this stock was worth some good chump change and we can cash in on that. So do your DD on Revlon, folks. There's a lot going on with this big brand name company. Nobody's going to let it die. It's worth too much money. Come on now. Two out of three ain't bad. I think two out of three of the stocks we looked at have got strong potential for gains. M Guy, it's a shell company, not making any money. They just cut a deal with a company that's going to give them a bunch of assets and a chunk of change. The company they just got was doing $70 million worth of business just this year. So when they lose that shell and we start seeing revenues, it's not going to be like 10,000, 50,000, 200,000. They're not going to grow at clips. They're going to have this big drop right in front of us. And I think that's going to help them a lot. Plus, they're going to be in business making money. The other one, Revlon. Revlon is going back to the major exchanges sooner or later. You've got a company here that's got serious branding, millions, maybe billions of dollars have been put into branding Revlon. Everybody knows who they are and they're still doing billions of dollars worth of business. And now we see the light at the end of the tunnel. They're coming out and they're probably going to end up back on the major exchange. Well, to be on the NASDAQ, minimum price is three bucks. To be on the New York Stock Exchange, minimum price is four bucks. So if you just want want to use those as your price points for now, that's fine. But in either case, I think Revlon is going back to the major exchanges and going to make us a lot of money. All right, folks, remember due diligence is how I'm learning most of this. I put it out there. I put it on our Discord group. I put it on a variety of Facebook pages. I put a lot of information on Twitter. I'm John Zadar. Remember, that's what I go by on Twitter. Keep up with me because I put this information out there so you can make use of it. Any company being kicked off of the major exchanges is most likely going to make you some money. Any company going into bankruptcy is most likely likely going to make you money. Remember folks, DD, it's great. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.